Today, I would like to talk about the idea of innovation path to peace. And I want to start by saying that if it wasn't for space technology, Times 5 would not have disrupted an industry that hasn't had innovation in 1400 years, which by surprise is worth $2 trillion today. And very few, if any, companies are tackling the innovation side of what we do. So today we stand here very proud being part of the space program uh, with our friends at the Space Foundation, NASA, and friends and partners of such. Today I'd like to start by sharing uh, three stories that, that talk about how innovation contributes to the world and makes it better to us. And each three of them are very, very personal. The first one is a story about Jenny. Uh, Jenny I had met over the summertime. Uh, it was an unusual story because my R&D team had been pu pushing me for <laughs> quite some time to spend more time with them. I'd been neglecting them for, for a bit of time and I dedicated six weeks to, with no interruption, to work with them on some of the new innovations that we have coming. And uh, delightfully, at, at one evening, uh, the engineers have their own uh, get-togethers where they do their own personal projects outside of what I have them do for us. <laughs> So we went to this uh, worn down warehouse at the end of the city and it felt like a bit of a movie. I was a bit afraid somebody was gonna jump out and do something to us. And we went on this little, nice little warm warehouse and I found all these little, uh, well, all these engineers coming up with all of their own little projects and building them on the spot and helping each other. Everything from robots to 3D printers and this was just them having fun. But well, that wasn't the interesting part. The interesting part was in a deep far corner, there was a young girl uh, working on one of the robots. So I walked over and I introduced myself and I, I wanted to know a little bit more about what she's doing. She, she was very out of place. And uh, she introduced herself, my name is Jenny. Um, she started talking to me about the robot that she's building, the personality she's building for this robot, what that robot can do and demonstrating what this robot is, is all about. And um, through the conversation, I got so fascinated, I had to ask her the one question that was top of my mind, how old are you? And to my surprise, I found she's nine years old. Nine years old. And I asked her, how long have you been doing this for? She said, I started when I was seven. Now, what was even more interesting is that she actually teaches robotics, not just to her peers, but people who are <laughs> significantly much older than her. When, when I was concluding my conversation with her, I asked her, what, do you, what are your plans for the future? And she pulls out this, this booklet, this book that she'd created, it has 118 ideas that she plans to implement. And she had this great amount of understanding a very powerful idea that many of us lose concept of it and very easily happens, is that the world is full of abundance. And it was a powerful idea that she had embraced regardless of which robot she was building. And if it hadn't, if it hadn't worked, she has the next one ready to go. And she, inspired, and she inspired me and showed that it doesn't matter how old you are or what your background is, you can do many great things to contribute to this world. And it, although Jenny is very lucky uh, that she's in an environment where she has parents that encourage this and engineers to work with, there are many, there are millions of Jennies around the world who we don't see uh, or have a chance to collaborate with who are out there who are trying to make changes to the world. The second story is about my son himself, who's five years old. I see him as a little innovator himself. And it happened one morning. Uh, when my wife was yelling at him uh, for scribbling on the wall. He, he created a big little painting. It made no sense to us, but he was doing some really amazing creative work. And uh, as typically as most mothers would, would say, stop that and you got to clean this up. And I said, you know what? Let him do what he's doing because he is exploring and, and developing his own creative genius. And when I see children that write on a wall or bang on pots in, in a kitchen, they're, they're actually exploring their genius and the world uh, conditions them to, hey, there's a certain order or certain rules to doing certain things. You should not do that. Let them write on the walls. Just keep it on a specific wall. <laughs> Don't let them do all the walls. That's okay, they can learn. Uh, let them bang on a few of the pots. They could be a creative musical genius right in, in your kitchen. You just never know uh, what, it's, what, what they're thinking, what they're trying to do, but let them, encourage them to do it. The final story is myself, why I am actually standing in front of you today. I myself was very, very fortunate. I had great parents, great, great education. I had, had a very privileged background. And as I had gone through my, uh, let's say, formal career, I had, I had come to a point where I had sort of had this personal uh, epiphany about what am I gonna do with all this? What am I gonna do with this great knowledge I have, these skills that I've built? What, what am I gonna bring to the world? What have I actually done? And the answer was I have done absolutely nothing. Um, and so I started down the quest of trying to find a way um, to do something for the world. And it wasn't just doing something for the sake of doing something for the world, but I realized that we all have the gift of knowledge, the gift of uh, capabilities. 
But this is not about donating time. This is not about donating money. That's a very easy thing to do, and I encourage all people to do that. But we never stop and ask ourselves, what have I done with my own capabilities and my own resources to try to change the world? And that's what my company is about, and that's what we do every day. We work really, really hard to inspire people, to help them pray better without having any pain. So finally, through this, this journey of mine, um, we were very, very fortunate that last, uh, last year in 2013, we were recognized by one of the world's greatest innovators, somebody who in the face of fear has enormous amount of courage, a man who when is in a region of complete disparity, brings hope and light to everybody. We were recognized by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, who recognized us as a global innovation company in a space where rarely anybody plays. And he recognized because he's building Dubai as the capital of the Islamic economy. And we were very, very fortunate to be part of that. Finally, it was him that it was Dubai is his dream to make this happen. Hassan, my son, has a dream to be creative. Uh, Jenny has a dream to use robotics to change the world. And today I'm here sharing my dream with you and bringing space technology to others who have other dreams. And I encourage everybody to, to make those dreams happen because you never really know how far they'll go because I promise you they will when you try. <laughs>